हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू आवर चैनल अदम एजुकेशन एज यू ऑल नो दैट टुडे इन द लाइफ सेशन देर वे सम इश्यूज बिकॉज ऑफ विच द लाइफ सेशन एब्रप्टली स्टॉप सो इंस्टेड ऑफ वेटिंग फॉर टुमारो आई एम ब्रिंगिंग यू अकॉर्डेड वीडियो ऑफ द सेम टॉपिक दैट वी वर गोइंग टू डिस्कस इन द लाइफ टुडे सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू सॉल्व टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी आई सी एस सी केमिस्ट्री क्वेश्चन पेपर एंड टुडे इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डू सेक्शन ए सो लेट्स बिगिन विद इट द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज एक्चुअली एम सी क्यू बेस्ड वन लेट्स सी वॉट आर द क्वेश्चन choose the correct answer from the options given below so let's begin with the first question the element with the highest ionization potential is hydrogen cesium radon or helium so you know one thing that ionization potential is the amount of energy which is required by a neutral atom to convert into a positively charged gaseous ion so what is happening the electron is getting lost so more the energy required for uh, that electron to be lost more is the ionization potential but for metals you know metals have a very high tendency to lose electrons as a result for them the ionization potential is not very high so in our options we have cesium and radon both of which are metals so obviously these two are not going to be our answer next we have hydrogen and helium out of hydrogen and helium you know that helium is a noble gas and helium has the least tendency to attract or lose any electron so as a result if you want to uh, remove an electron from helium you have to apply a very very high amount of energy to it so it will have the highest ionization potential so the correct answer will be helium our next question is the inert electrode used in the electrolysis of acidified water this is a direct question from the chapter electrolysis you know that whenever we are electrolyzing acidulated water we always use platinum electrodes because they do not combine with any of the gases which are evolved at the cathode and the anode and they are inert in nature so the answer will be platinum our next question a compound with low boiling point so first let's see the options sodium chloride calcium chloride potassium chloride and carbon tetrachloride out of the four options the first three are all ionic compounds or electrovalent compounds they have a very high boiling and melting point and on the other hand carbon tetrachloride is a covalent compound which has a low boiling and melting point because the forces in between the molecules are quite weak so the correct answer will be carbon tetrachloride Our next question is the acid which can produce carbon from cane sugar. This is also a direct question from the chapter sulfuric acid. So uh, you know that whenever sulfuric acid is added, concentrated sulfuric is uh, uh, sulfuric acid is added to cane sugar or the sugar which we consume, it forms a black spongy mass, right? So uh, this is the acid which can produce carbon from cane sugar. Concentrated sulfuric acid is the answer. It is removing all the water from sugar and it is converting it into carbon. our next question the organic compound having a triple carbon carbon covalent bond so in this question the best approach is to make the structures and check whether they are following the criteria of a triple covalent compound triple bonded covalent compound or not so let us begin with the first one so c3 so first of all i am making three carbon and in one of them i am adding a triple bond now let me see if the hydrogen number given in the option matches so we have four hydrogen so let me see how many hydrogen i will need in my uh in my structure so we are i'll need three hydrogen and yeah three so and one more hydrogen here yes so we see that the formula is exactly matching with the structure that we have made when we have added a triple carbon coval uh, whenever we have added a triple bond so this is definitely the answer now if you make the figures using now if you make the structures using the last three ones you will see that they are not matching let me give you an example let me see option 4 uh, c4 so i have made four carbon atoms and one of them is bonded by triple bond so let me make the number of hydrogen and let's see whether it is satisfying so here we will have h2 and here we will have h so 3 4 5 6 it is h10 so it is not the answer the answer is the first option So I hope these questions are clear. Now let's move on to the next question. State one relevant observation for each of the following reactions. So we have to give some observation. You can also write the reaction and explain, or you can also just explain. I would suggest you to please write the equation if you know it, because it is not going to deduct any marks. Rather, the examiner will feel that you are completely versed with the topics. So your first question is action of concentrated nitric acid on copper. So the reaction is like this. copper plus hno3 in the bracket please do write concentrated 
इट विल गिव कॉपर नाइट्रेट सी यू एन ओ थ्री होल्ड वाइज इट विल ऑल्सो गिव वाटर एंड इट विल इवॉल्व नाइट्रोजन डाइऑक्साइड गैस सो द आंसर विल बी नाइट्रोजन डाइऑक्साइड गैस इज इवॉल्व एंड यू कैन गिव द रिएक्शन एज सच नेक्स्ट इज एक्शन ऑफ एक्सेस अमोनियम हाइड्रोक्साइड ऑन टू इन टू कॉपर सल्फेट सोल्यूशन सो दिस इज अ वेरी इजी वन फ्रॉम द चैप्टर एनोलिकल केमिस्ट्री कॉपर सल्फेट सो सी यू एस ओ फोर फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वेन यू आर एडिंग एन एच फोर एस ओ एन एच फोर ओ एच एमोनियम हाइड्रोक्साइड यू विल गेट कॉपर हाइड्रोक्साइड सी यू ओ एच होल्ड वाइज प्लस एमोनियम सल्फेट एन एच फोर होल्ड वाइज एस ओ फोर सो दिस विल गिव यू अ पेल ब्लू प्रेसिपिटेट यू हैव टू मैंशन द कलर्स एन एवर क्वेश्चन कम फ्रॉम एनालिटिकल केमिस्ट्री ओके नाउ वेन यू आर एडिंग एक्सेस ऑफ एमोनियम हाइड्रोक्साइड टू द प्रोडक्ट लेट सी वॉट हैपन्स सो यू हैव सी यू ओ एच होल्ड वाइज प्लस एन एच फोर होल्ड वाइज एस ओ फोर and in this you are adding NH4OH ammonia hydroxide again in excess so what do you get you will get tetraamine copper sulfate that is Cu NH3 whole 4 whole SO4 this is tetraamine copper sulfate it is a complex salt and along with that you will get water this is completely soluble and it will give you an inky blue color inky blue solution no precipitate in this case inky blue solution so i am repeating again please do write the color change whatever you are observing so in this case what you have to write we observe an inky blue solution of tetraamine copper sulfate and also write the reaction along with it all right i hope these two questions are also clear to you let's move on to the next question here we have to write balanced chemical equations for each of the following so, uh, so let's do it it is a very easy one because it is directly asks from the things you have studied in your book you don't have to think much if you know you know otherwise you have to leave it there's no other option so the first reaction is reaction of carbon powder and concentrated nitric acid so it will be as such carbon plus concentrated nitric acid it will give you carbon dioxide water and nitrogen dioxide also one more thing it has been said that you have to balance so balancing do it after the entire question paper is completed don't do it as soon as you are writing the equation okay it will kill a lot of your time so it's better that you first write the skeletal equations and then after finishing the entire paper you will have lots and lots of time left because the paper is very small it is not lengthy then you can do the balancing thing and the now our next question is reaction of excess ammonia with chlorine so this is also a very interesting and very important question because in your book you have uh, two reactions uh, of ammonia and chlorine when in one case ammonia is in excess and in one case chlorine is in excess so don't get confused so let's write the reaction nh3 plus cl2 gives n2 plus nh4 cl so this is the reaction below nh3 don't forget to write excess okay so this is your reaction number 3 is reaction of lead nitrate solution with ammonium hydroxide this is again from the chapter analytical chemistry so let's write it i don't have space over here okay lead nitrate that is pv no3 whole twice plus ammonium hydroxide so nh4oh when it reacts you will get lead hydroxide that is pboh whole twice and you are getting ammonium nitrate nh4 no3 so this is a precipitate and it has a color chalky white so again mention it in the reaction chalky white precipitate next question is producing ethane from bromoethane using zinc copper couple in alcohol this thing is just there to confuse you because in the book has not been mentioned like this 
you just have producing ethane from bromoethane so no need to uh, no need to consider the phrase zn cu couple in alcohol whatever reaction you know just write it down and it will be correct because there is only one reaction of preparing ethane from bromoethane which is prescribed in your syllabus so obviously that is the answer so let us write the equation number number 4 okay so we have c2 h5 br which is bromo ethane two nascent hydrogen you can just write zinc and copper because it is given in the question so zinc copper couple so you are going to get ethane c2h6 plus hbr hydrogen bromide so this is the reaction our last question is complete combustion of ethane remember one thing whenever an organic compound is burnt in excess of oxygen it will always produce carbon dioxide and water as the only products so complete combustion means the entire thing has been converted into carbon dioxide and water so complete combustion of ethane will be like this c2h6 plus oxygen that means you are burning it you are combusting it you will get carbon dioxide and water be it ethane be it methane be it butane whenever complete combustion is given your products will be carbon dioxide and water only so i guess these equations are also clear to you let's move on to the next question now you have to draw the structural formula of uh, these compounds and in the next part you have to write the iupac name of the following compounds whose common names have been given okay very easy question let's do it before that let me tell you one thing in question number d number 3 isopropane isopropane doesn't exist the question is either wrong or it has been given to confuse you so in case of isopropane just draw the normal structure of propane because we have this iso uh, isomer starting from butane we have isobutane we have isopentane but we don't have isopropane all right so we are just going to draw the structure of normal propane so our first question 2,2 dimethyl pentane so first of all let's make the carbon chain pentane that means 5 carbon 2,2 so if we begin from here 1 2 3 4 5 in the 2 position we have 2 methyl that is ch3 so our 2,2 dimethyl is done now in case of the carbons we will just put the number of hydrogen it requires to satisfy its valency and then we are done so here we will have 3 here we will have 2 so ch2 here also we will have 2 and in the end 3 so this is 2,2 dimethyl pentane very easy next is methanol methanol you know methanol means one carbon is present in it so ch3 oh you can directly write it like this or you can also write it like this coh and just put the hydrogen from all the three sides ch3oh so this is methanol next you have isopropane so like i told you we are just going to draw the normal structure for propane so propane has three carbon atoms single bond so i'm just going to put the hydrogen in order to satisfy the valency of the carbon so this is your propane so i hope the structures are clear to you very easy question it was let's move on to the next question we have to write the iupac name of the following compounds let me just erase it quickly and then we are going to write the iupac names again let me mention one thing that whatever questions are not there in the syllabus now i have decided to skip it but if students who are going to give their board examination next year if you have these topics in your um uh, syllabus please make sure that you are writing down it in the comment section so that i can make a separate video on the left topics so that you also can benefit from it now we have to write the iupac name of the following compounds acetaldehyde so what is acetaldehyde let me tell you it is ch3 cho it is actually an aldehyde which contains two carbon atoms and you know when an al aldehyde contains two carbon atoms the iupac name is ethanal so ethanal is also known as acetaldehyde okay next is acetylene acetylene is actually the common name for ethane so ethane will be the iupac name so i guess this is clear very easy questions let's move on to the next question over here we have to give some reasons for the statements given to us so already i have the answers with me i'm just going to explain it to you so that you can understand 
the first question is graphite anode is preferred to platinum in the electrolysis of molten lead bromide you must have read that whenever molten lead bromide is electrolyzed we use graphite anode anode we use graphite anode we do not use platinum anode or platinum cathode the reason is that graphite is unaffected by the reactive bromine vapors A bromine is moving to the anode during this electrolysis process so bromine does not react with lead as a result lead is used whenever you see that something is used instead of something else the main reason will either be it is cheaply available the second reason will be it is unaffected or it is unreactive these are the two common reasons you can use our next question is soda lime is preferred to sodium hydroxide in the laboratory preparation of methane in case of methane we need to maintain dry conditions for its preparation so soda lime is used instead of sodium hydroxide because sodium hydroxide is deliquescent in nature it can easily absorb water from the atmosphere and can become watery as a result we use soda lime so that effectively the water can be removed and dry conditions can be maintained next one is hydrated copper sulfate turns white on heating the most common question and the easiest one to you know hydrated copper sulfate contains water of crystallization because of which it has a bluish color but as soon as you heat it the water of crystallization will get removed it will evaporate so as a result it will turn white so this is the reason by the removal of water of crystallization the color changes next is concentrated nitric acid appears yellow when it is left for a while in a glass bottle so this is another important observation which you will see in class 11 and 12 when you do laboratory work so the thing is whenever nitric acid is prepared in the laboratory initially it is transparent but with time when you keep it in a glass bottle it will start decomposing and on decomposing it will form nitrogen dioxide gas which is reddish brown in color and as a result when that gas dissolves in the remaining acid it will turn the acid yellowish so not exactly yellowish a little reddish yellow this sort of a color you are going to observe your last question from this give reason is hydrogen chloride gas fumes in moisture so uh, whenever hydrogen chloride gas is prepared in the laboratory and if you leave it open what you will see you will see white fumes why does it happen you have studied in the fountain experiment that hydrogen chloride gas is highly soluble in water so whatever water vapor is present around the hydrogen chloride gas it will react with that water it will dissolve in that water and as a result you are going to see fumes those fumes are actually the mist of hydrogen chloride gas which has been mixed with the water vapor so i guess the give reason questions are also clear to you make sure that you are writing it in your own words you don't have to copy it down from the book or anywhere you just have to understand the topic and write it because in your board examination points will not be given on the basis of how much you have memorized it will be given on the basis of how much you can write by understanding the question that is the thing which you have to focus on now our next question is a numerical uh, from the chapter mole concept let's see the amount of each reactant required to produce 750 ml of carbon dioxide when two volumes of carbon monoxide combine with one volume of oxygen to produce two volumes of carbon dioxide all right so our uh, volume of carbon dioxide that is the volume of the product is given we have to find the volume of each of the reactants so it has also been given in the form of a balanced equation so our work becomes much more easier so let's see how to do it so first of all i'm going to write the equation once again so we have two volumes according to the reaction one volume and two volume so we have the amount of uh, carbon dioxide given to us so we can see that two volume of carbon dioxide requires two volume of carbon monoxide so as a result 750 ml of carbon dioxide will also require the same amount so 750 ml of co so the amount of co or carbon monoxide given in the equation is 750 ml now similarly you can see that two volumes of carbon dioxide is prepared by two volume of carbon dioxide is prepared by one volume of oxygen similarly if we have 750 ml of co2 how much will it require to require 750 by 2 which will give you 375 ml of o2 so 375 ml 
so you will require 375 ml of oxygen and 750 ml of carbon monoxide i hope it is clear to you a very simple question you have to just use unitary method and solve it next question is the volume occupied by 80 gram of carbon dioxide at stp very easy one how do we do it we know that first of all let us find out the molecular mass of carbon dioxide that will help us a little bit carbon dioxide has a molecular mass of 12 plus 16 into 2 which will give you 12 plus 32 that is 44 so 44 gram is the molecular mass of carbon dioxide so we know molecular mass will occupy 22.4 liter at stp isn't it so we how many grams have been asked 80 gram so 80 gram will occupy how much so 22.4 divided by 44 into 80 now if you solve it the answer will be in decimal so your answer will be 40.72 liter this is the answer in mole concept you have studied that one atom in mole concept you have studied that molecular mass contains 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 atoms or you can also say that in case of atomic mass it contains that many number of atoms so these basic things you have to remember in order to solve any question related to mole concept let's move on to the next question calculate the number of molecules in 4.4 gram of carbon or carbon dioxide sorry so let's see how to solve it similar process we have to use So number 3 you just saw molecular mass of carbon dioxide was 44 so like I told you molecular mass of any compound contains 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 molecules so accordingly 44 gram of CO2 44 grams of CO2 will contain 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 molecules isn't it so how many grams have been asked out here 4.4 gram so therefore 4.4 gram will contain how much 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 divided by 44 into 4.4 so it will get cancelled out by 0 0.1 and if you solve it you will get 6.022 into 10 to the power 22 molecules so these many molecules will be present in 4.4 gram of carbon dioxide so I guess this is clear to you our last question from this uh, question is state the law associated in question number f1 above so in question number one that means in this question which form which law did we used we use gay lussac's law so we have to mention and explain that gay lussac's law so i have already written it over here i'm just going to read it out for you so according to Gay-Lussac's law, when gases react, they do so in volumes which bear a simple ratio to one another and to the volumes of the gaseous products provided that all the volumes are measured at the same temperature and pressure. This is one of the most important uh, things. We have to remember that all the products and the, comp uh, and the reactants have to be in the gaseous state in order to apply Gay-Lussac's law. For example, in place of carbon dioxide, if you had water which was not in the form of a gas, that means we had liquid water in that case we couldn't apply gay lussacs law to the right hand side of the equation okay so gay lussacs law is applicable only to gaseous products and reactants and also the pressure and temperature has to be maintained as constant now the next question is you have to give one word or a phrase for the following statements the chemical bond formed by a shared pair of electrons each bonding atom contributing one electron to each pair so whenever sharing of electron occurs it is known as covalent bond so covalent bond is the answer covalent bond i'm just writing it till covalent there is no space to write electrode used as a cathode in electrodefining of impure copper so in case of electrodefining what happens our cathode is a very thin block of the pure metal because on the cathode itself the pure metal ions are going to get deposited so our cathode will be pure copper rod we use a pure copper rod which is not very thick a thin pure copper rod as the cathode next is the substance prepared by adding other metals to the base metal in appropriate proportions to obtain certain desirable properties so it will be the answer you are mixing one metal with another it is known as an alloy right it is known as an alloy this is the answer now the next question 
the tendency of an atom to attract the shared pair of elect uh, shared electron pairs to itself and combine in a compound you have studied about this in the periodic table chapter it is known as electronegativity it is a tendency it is not a real observation electronegativity all right let's move on to the question number h fill in the blanks from the choices given in the brackets okay the polar covalent compound in a gaseous state that does not cons uh, that does not conduct electricity is first of all carbon tetrachloride and methane are not polar covalent compounds so our answer will definitely be ammonia and ammonia is also not a good conductor of electricity or you can say it is a non conductor of electricity so ammonia is the answer so sometimes you don't even have to remember the uh, proper explanation you can just see the options and you can easily eliminate the wrong options our next question is the number of moles in 11 gram of nitrogen gas so let us do it number of moles there is a formula for that number of moles is equal to given mass that is 11 divided by molecular mass for nitrogen gas the molecular mass is 14 into 2 so if you solve it you are going to get 0.39 as the answer so 0.39 is your required answer now the next question is an alkali which completely dissociates into ions is so out of ammonium hydroxide calcium hydroxide and lithium hydroxide there can be two answers calcium hydroxide and lithium hydroxide because they are good alkalies they will easily dissolve in water and form ions complete ions although calcium hydroxide is not very easily dissolvable uh, it is not very easily soluble in water but even when it uh, dissolves it will produce ions completely it will dissociate into ions so both the answers can be written now your last question is an alloy which is used to make statues it is bronze it is a very direct question nothing to explain here you have to read the table where uh, you have to remember the alloys such as duralumin stainless steel solder brass and bronze that's all so we have successfully finished section a of 2020 icsc chemistry question paper hopefully tomorrow i'm going to bring a live session on solving section number b of the same paper till then if you faced any difficulty in understanding any question from this video please mention it in the comments below and also you can send your doubts to the email which is provided in the description box thank you very much for patiently listening to me we are going to meet again soon in the next live session